Hi, I'm, I'm Janet. Lucy. I'm going to audition for Lucy. Janet. Uh, what am I doing? Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Now it has been a hot minute since we did any interviews and today I am super excited to have Lucy Jones joining me straight from her dressing room at the Adelphi. Now for those of you who don't know, um, she's currently playing Jenna and Waitress, mm -hmm. which is incredible. Um, and we're super excited to have her on our channel, especially because we are doing Waitress Week this week, which has been a week, a week? A week? A week filled with waitress related videos. So if you haven't watched any of those, check them out. I will leave them below. Anyway, now um, before we talk about Waitress, mm -hmm. I want to just take it back a tiny bit okay. and talk about your career before all of this yes. and kind of back to the start. Um, as far as I'm aware, your first professional kind of MT was Les Mis. Yes. And that was straight after X Factor. Mm -hmm. um, most of you will probably know that Lucy was on X Factor and then she went into Les Mis to play for Sir. How was that experience transitioning from TV into theatre and how was just your first kind of like professional theatre job? Like, how was it? Yeah, um, well, I always wanted to do theatre, that was always where I wanted to go, so when I did X Factor and I came out of the show and I was working with a management company mm -hmm. uh, called Modest, and they kind of said to me, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And I said, I'd love to work in theatre, can you introduce me to some agents? Uh, and so they did, they introduced me to an agent that I worked with uh, for a long time, uh, and his assistant then um, kind of became my agent over the mm -hmm. years and now I've gone with him to his new company so exactly. I've actually been with him for almost 10 years which is amazing mm -hmm. um, but so that transition for me was something that I always wanted to do mm -hmm. uh, and where I saw myself going mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't necessarily um, like a, oh maybe we'll try theatre I mean it wasn't that at all mm -hmm. but it, sometimes people think that with yeah, reality TV absolutely. that oh you didn't get a record deal so you must want to go into theatre and I was like no no this is what I want to do I love yeah, what I, wanted I do to that anyway. um, so I went in and I auditioned for Les Mis and I was lucky enough to get it mm -hmm. uh, it's not always that easy obviously I've had lots and lots of no's over mm -hmm. the years um, but yeah that was my first uh, professional job and I loved it. Yeah, of course. Um, and since that has happened, it's good to say that your career has absolutely excelled. Thank you. And you have done some incredible roles. I'm just going to let you know, I and mean, you probably already know. <laughs> um, you were Morning Ghost, you've done Elle Was in Legally Blonde twice, mm -hmm. Maureen in Rent, Holly in The Wedding Singer, and you represented the country in Eurovision, which yeah. is also crazy. Um, and you're still so young. Like, how, how can you sum up your career so far? Oh, uh, well, first of all, thank you. If you say things and you make them sound really impressive, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, uh, gosh, I don't know. Uh, I've been incredibly... I, I'm... Ah, I'm hearing lots of people in my life, in my voice, in my head now saying, don't put yourself down. I'm not putting myself down by saying this, but I have been extremely lucky. Obviously, it's a kind of a combination of mm -hmm. hard work, talent, luck, and all the other things, right place at the right time, uh -huh. all these things. Um, but... I don't know, I would say that I'm, I I work really hard. I'm, I'm a grafter, yeah, I'm a hustler, absolutely. and I love what I do as well. You can't do this unless you really, really love yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think that's maybe why uh, I've also put myself out there for things. When mm -hmm. um, Nikolai and the team at Curve brought me in for Legally Blonde initially, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't brought in for Elle Woods, I was brought in for another character. Okay. Um, and I kind of went into my audition and I said, sorry, but would you mind if I sang for Elle? And they all kind of Amazing. went, yeah, sure. And then the next day I did a recall and then I got the job that evening. That's so I was like, what? That so you do have to put yourself out uh -huh. there, but it's about believing in yourself um, to a level before it becomes, you know, arrogant or anything. Because yeah, that absolutely. can very easily happen with people, I think. Yeah, no. Um, and now you're at Waitress, which yeah. I think is arguably one of the most sought out roles is Jenna in the West End. When it was announced here, I feel like every single West End leading lady wanted to play this role. <laughs> yeah. Like every Including concert you go to, it'd be like, all me. things she used to be mine. It was yeah. everywhere. It was mm -hmm. such a big deal. Um, can you tell me what the audition process was like for the show and what it was like when you found out that you actually got the part? Yeah, I mean, it was a bit of a long runner for me. Mm -hmm. I auditioned with the rest of the cast um, back in, what, September of last year, mm -hmm. in September 2018. And uh, I was on holiday in August and I got an email through saying, uh, we'd like you to come and audition for Waitress mm -hmm. and uh, I already had tickets for the opening night like I <laughs> I wanted to see it badly um, since I did Wedding, Sing Wedding Singer mm -hmm. and Cassie Compton kind of said to me you need to listen to this album because this yeah. is you like this is your voice you're gonna you're gonna play this and I was like no I won't no I won't at home like do you know me now like practicing um, 
And so yeah, I got the email saying I had my audition and I was like, right, okay, I'm gonna kick this. I'm gonna <laughs> really like work my bum off awesome. here. So I watched maybe 10, 12 films of the era of mm -hmm. Waitress, which had um, females in the lead, maybe who were waitresses or were in abusive relationships or were um, yeah. from the same kind of production team and things like that, just so I was in the right frame of mind. Right. Then I took the script to my acting coach and we worked on it, um, the scenes that I was doing for the audition in great detail. I went and saw my vocal coach, I sang the show in my house every day. So I was, I was ready for my audition, uh -huh. so when I went in, I think I was, I was the first girl that, in this round of auditions because I think they might have um, previously seen some people, mm -hmm. you know, on tape and things like that. This yeah. always, it always kind of happens that way. But when they, the producers physically came to London, I was the first girl that they saw, just mm -hmm. by chance, by chance. It just happened to be there was a boy in before me um, who I know very well, and then me. Yeah. Uh, and so I went in feeling like, okay, this is exciting, it's new, it's fresh. Hopefully they'll be excited to see us and like, you know, see what's gonna happen here. And I was with Barry Weiss, another producer who I've been aware of for my whole adult life. I know exactly who he is. And I kind of went in, he was so wonderful and warm and welcoming. And, and also, side note, I thought Sarah Bareilles was gonna be in there because downstairs, oh, someone in the building said to me, Sarah Bareilles is here. And I was like, <laughs> Holy mother no of big wow. girl, you know. <laughs> exactly. I was like freaking out. I'd read her book. I'd yeah. like watched loads of her stuff online, and I, I'm, I've lo loved her for yeah, a long time. So I was like, oh my goodness me. Um, but as soon as I opened the door, she wasn't there. I instantly relaxed. I was like, oh thank yeah, God. Yeah, even more pressure. Even more pressure. But I mean, auditioning for Barry was a big thing mm -hmm. anyway. But to have that the heat Extra on bit. just at that last second, I was like, he, please. <laughs> Somebody. Um, but anyway, so I went in and I kind of had a chat with him and I did the material and we got on really well and he said in the room, okay, we're gonna bring you back for a recall. And mm -hmm. I was like, brilliant, okay. And then a few weeks passed and I hadn't heard anything. And I was like, oh gosh, they've forgotten about me. Um, but then they did bring me back in and then once again with Sarah and with Diane mm -hmm. and everyone. Um, and that what, that's what I thought was the final. Mm -hmm. um, and I left and I went and met my, my bestie, Lauren, uh, for a glass of wine in Nando's in Liverpool Street. Um, it, oh yeah, can't, can't, go go wrong, <laughs> can't go wrong, can't go wrong, bit of white, can't go wrong. Um, so we sat there and I thought I had messed it up. I was so, so I'm so frustrated with myself. I almost put too much pressure on yeah, myself because so I'd done prep. all that preparation and I was there and I just kind of walked in and it was at the, um, what's that theatre where We All Rocky was? Dominion. Dominion, mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a studio in the Dominion uh -huh. and there's uh, windows at the back of it and really bright outside and they were all kind of sat with their backs to the window so I couldn't really see any of their faces. Oh so it literally God. looked like I was in front of like a panel full of Dementors and I was like, oh gosh, this is so nerve wracking. But then I went over and I, as I always do when I go to an audition, I shake my hands and I introduce myself and say hello. And I, like Diane Paulus and Sarah Baranis and, all, and David Grimrod and I was like, oh my God. And I think I just, six. yeah, exactly. I was like, hi, I'm, I'm Janet, Lucy. I'm here to audition for Lucy. Janet, uh, what am I doing? It's like one of those kind of uh -huh. spoof moments. But um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I obviously did a bit better than I thought I had because mm -hmm. uh, I got a call later in the day saying they wanted to see me yeah. again. But I thought that was the final round. Sorry, this is going on and on and on. No, Sorry. Um, so I thought that was going to be the final round, but they said, we're going to do a mix and match session to mm -hmm. check chemistry. Um, with some boys and things, uh -huh. so we be free on Friday. Uh, and I was working with Ellen Teo at the time, and that's why we were in Liverpool Street. So I kind of went to Friday Tapman at the orchestra, and uh -huh. I was like, um, can I have another day off this week? And he was like, what's it for? And I was like, waitress, and he was like, oh, can I come? <laughs> uh, so off I went, and um, I thought there was gonna be, you know, five or six Jenners, mm -hmm. five or six Pometers, but there was two of each. Mm -hmm. So we were, instantly we were all like, Okay, this is like this is no, getting this is really real now. This is we're getting down to the wire here, um, and uh, yeah, I auditioned that day with David mm -hmm. and with Laura and with Marisha um, and with Pete. Mm -hmm. uh, I did the scene before she used to be mine with Pete, and um, I've met Pete before. I've worked with him, uh -huh. but he's like so funny and jolly, and he's basically like Jim Carrey. He's <laughs> so funny and like silly, and he's off the wall, and he wow. does all these kooky things. But um, I'd never seen him do anything like yeah, that. And so he, honestly, I burst into tears. He just screamed at me and I was like, <gasps> and I was like, no, this is good, use it, use it. Because then I went, and I, then I sang She Used To Be Mike. And I was like, oh, okay, good. Um, 
And obviously then they decided to bring Kat in to start the show, mm -hmm. um, having played it on Broadway and everything, which I completely understood. Uh -huh. um, and then a couple of other things happened. I, I auditioned for a couple of other things and I had a couple of conflicting offers. Mm -hmm. um, and in the end then Waitress came and said, this is the contract, we would love you to do it. Yeah. This, this is it all in black and white. And it gone on for so long by this point. Yeah. It had gone on for so long. And in the meantime, there was Billboard of Me in Times Square. Yeah, and it just like lots of things happened where uh, people, everyone was like, what's going on? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, just kind of you. <laughs> exactly. It was it was all you know. It was all about bored and just completely innocent. They asked me to go out and do a poster shoot, mm -hmm. so I went out and did that. And yeah, I was like, what a brilliant opportunity! Uh -huh. I went and saw Sarah Bareilles and Gavin Grill on the show. What an amazing thing! Mm -hmm. I met Carol King. We had a lovely time. It was so cool. <laughs> um, and then yes, yeah, so then eventually um, we by this point we kind of knew that something was going to happen, mm -hmm. but we didn't know what. Um, so it was a long one. It was a real long runner. Um, but then yeah, in May. Um, I did a couple of shows for Kat mm -hmm. while she was uh, off doing it like wedding things. I think she's uh -huh. getting ready for her wedding. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was just the best thing I've ever done. And I've done some yeah. really, really cool, awesome stuff. I've been like, I, get, I can hear them so lucky, but it's this for me is like nothing else. Yeah, it's, it's such a beautiful show. show mm -hmm. And I'm so wonderfully blessed to be surrounded by the people that I am surrounded uh -huh. by to work with David every night David makes me better yeah. David is we sat here yesterday and talked about some of the scenes that we're doing and we talked about our intentions uh -huh. within them and what we're thinking and I've worked with people for a year before and not had those conversations yeah. you know people just they come in they do their job they go home David is an actor with an intelligent mind and yeah. he's my friend and it comes so, across on stage yeah like no good that. I'm glad I'm glad people yeah. keep saying to me oh it looks like you really like each other yeah. I'm like we do <laughs> like we do his wife is great his children are gorgeous like we all know each other yeah, and yeah. We're, it's it's cool like we're, we're all quite yeah. friendly in it's the like real fun. world it's quite nice yeah <laughs> amazing um yeah, there really has been such a buzz around the show, just in general, when it, when it got announced to come here, everyone was like going crazy about it. Mm. How did it feel to step out on your first official opening night? So not when you came in to cover, like, you are now Jenna, it's your role. Yeah, um, unbelievable. Uh -huh. I, it's, I think it took me a minute, I got to the end of the show and I just kind of collapsed in a heap of tears backstage. Yeah. But it's um, the, the first time I went on, mm -hmm. Uh, I felt very prepared. I, t I, I knew the script before I went into mm -hmm. rehearsals. I had the book, I had the songs, I learned everything so that I was as prepped as possible. Uh -huh. um, so it was then, I say just, it was just learning the physicalities of yeah. it, you know, the blocking. But she's a waitress, I play a waitress. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, ketchup and mustard and pies and bowls and, and cream and milk and sugar and butter and flour and all things. <laughs> and but, and it's very specific, you have yeah. to get it right because it's, it has a knock on effect to the next person who might need to use that for something. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of was like, right, okay, I had to put my head on of, my head on, I had to put my head on, gosh. Um, I had to put my mind into a place of, you need to concentrate fully on this and oh. nothing else. So I just, Someone's chatting outside. Maybe we should shut that window. Yeah, that'd be yeah, nice. Sorry. Thanks, Ange. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hi. What can you do? Um, yeah. No. So we um, kind of learned all of that, and I really put myself into a place of do this and nothing else. Oh. So my mind was so focused, and we did a little prayer circle before the show, and I was like, No, I'm good. I'm yeah, good. I'm very calm. Ready. And then I went and stood behind the curtain, and Graham, my stage manager, came and said, mm. "You ready?" I said, "Yeah." And so I just stood there, and the lights went down, and I heard, come in close, which is the announcement to turn off your phone. And which I just amazing. went, oh my god. And I turned around to Piers, who stood behind me, and I was like, like reaching for his hand, and he was like, you, don't worry, you, got you go, you go yeah, get it, girl. That's what he said to me, now he says it for every show. Um, and I was like, okay. So I had a second of panic, and then, sugar sugar and I was like I have like, listened to this so many times I've listened to this 500,000 times and then the curtain came out and I was like okay Jenna my hands <laughs> like the things and I was like okay I'm in and yeah. as soon as I started because it's a train that you can't get off this mm -hmm. role is same as L. Uh -huh. you can't it just goes and goes and goes you just don't stop and mm -hmm. um, I didn't get a chance to think about it and then it got to the end of the show and I kind of did my bow and I was already like crying a little bit and I came backstage and I was like bow! <laughs> and it's nothing to do with the fact that everyone wanted it mm. and it's this huge show and it was just I love this story so mm. much and I really really committed myself yeah. to to getting it right 
so that I walked into my audition room, the audition room, giving what I thought was a very clear vision of how I mm -hmm. saw Jenna and her world, and that for me was the most important thing. Uh, the music is beautiful. I feel like mm -hmm. a, a terrible singer could sing those songs and it would sound all right, you know. Yeah. Um, and I'm a singer, so it, that bit was going to go okay. Yeah. But the acting for me is um, something that I've worked really hard on over the years, mm -hmm. and um, I've not got a lot of jobs back in the day because I couldn't act or mm -hmm. was told I couldn't act or um, you know you just you're not very truthful uh -huh. or this or that. So I've worked really hard on that with my acting coach, um, whose name is Dee Cannon. You should look her up; she's amazing. <laughs> You should buy a book actually, it's the, I take it everywhere, I've got two copies of it. I'll find it, I'll link it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do, because it's amazing. Uh, she has a monologue book as well, it's very good, it's very helpful, that plug there. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, she and I worked really hard on it, and it, it kind of, that was my payoff, like finishing the mm -hmm. show, and I just thought if I never get to do this show again after tonight, that was, fun. that was the best thing I've ever done. Uh -huh. The best thing I've ever done work-wise. Well, I think it paid off because you know you're the only Jenna that ever made me cry. Oh, and I've seen well, five. Thank you. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, here, both here and in the states. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, thank you very much. No, I think you. you're the only person that I feel, personally for me, really tells the story and it makes me feel like I feel Jenna's whole journey. Oh, good. Well, that's what we're going for. So, <laughs> that's what we're going for. Again. Thank you. So, what draws you to the role of Jenna? Do you see yourself in her? What like same similar traits? Um, I think there's some of Jenna in everyone. I mm -hmm. think that's why the show appeals to so many different de demographics of uh -huh. people because she's so real. The show is written by a woman who, an incredible woman, who was a real woman. She was mm -hmm. trying to be an actor herself and she wanted to write and so she wrote this beautiful, truthful story about mm -hmm. real people living in a small town. And people come and see this and they say to me, gosh, nothing life-changing happened, nothing spectacular happened, there wasn't, you know, a tsunami wave mm -hmm. or, like, the, the barricades, or, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's kind of a, it's just real life, and I think that's why people appreciate it so yeah. much, because in every scene there is a moment that gets me of like, oh, I know that, or yeah. I've seen that, or yeah. my friend had that, or do you know what I mean? There's, and I'm not necessarily okay. saying my friends have been beaten by their husbands and all that kind yeah. of, it's not as, as straightforward is that it's mm -hmm. it's the little nuances like the relationships between the girls yep. and it's just so heartwarming and Jenna is funny and she's real and she's self-deprecative and I just as when I read her I read the script mm -hmm. before I saw the show and um I just fell in love with her I yeah. fell in love with the words that describe her and then I wrote out my own version of her in mm -hmm. great great detail <laughs> um in like a, a long document on my laptop which I still have and I go back to because uh -huh. that was my my fresh kind of eyes of I've just read the script who is Jenna I wrote it all down mm -hmm. and I was like I can't stop writing about her she's just she's just great to play yeah. it's so rare that you get to play someone who you know has these huge things going on in their life and yeah doesn't kind of do a tap dance about them and like like we do in real life we just yeah. go okay you know this really terrible thing has happened we don't talk about it we're british yeah we don't absolutely. we don't do anything about it but here it's, it's very cathartic as well yeah and just kind of i get to say these incredible words uh -huh. and play these very very real raw emotions and then laugh and then sing. Mm, I think then, it's a good balance of yeah, like oh, serious, like hard hitting topics yeah, with definitely. humour. And it's just like a nice. People don't expect it to be funny either. Yeah, and it is and actually it's so very funny. funny. It's almost like too funny. We've yeah. had to take some laughs out of it because it's, yeah. it's so funny. It that, is funny. At the minute, we've kind of had to do, drink, bring things back yeah, in a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> um, how hard was it to adapt the southern accent? Uh, you know what? I actually find it okay. It's it's kind of something that I can just slip into now. Uh -huh. I, I I did work with a dialect coach on the accent, but um, only for like maybe one hour tops. It was mm -hmm. it was a small amount of time, but I don't know. It just kind of it's really nice to do though. It's, it's like a very so nice natural. charming accent. I love it's it. It's gorgeous, isn't so it? Nice. I just, and it really like it's quite like open. Uh -huh. And so when if my voice is tired, mm -hmm. like when I was playing L. So you go up here and me 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 it's it's quite um you know straining uh -huh. but to do Jenna is she's a real relaxed mm -hmm. vocal yeah uh, speaking yeah so yeah it's uh, I didn't struggle too much though it was all right and I, but I do do it now in real life all the time people are like <laughs> okay, like, okay cool. you know at work talk, calm yourself <laughs> and do you have a favorite song from the show uh, which one do you think is one of the most challenging because it is a, a fairly big thing there is yeah. some like, 
big um, numbers. I mean, the, the most challenging thing about the role is that I'm on stage the whole time, uh -huh. and because it's so real, you can't hide behind things. You can't hide yeah. behind a huge dance routine, or mm -hmm. um, you can't sing the songs if your voice isn't feeling mm -hmm. healthy. You know, mm -hmm. um, so you have to be completely honest with your body and yourself and your audience. Yeah, uh, and I think that's another reason why people like it so much because there's just no Absolutely. walls. It's just real, and um, yeah, I think that uh, I've forgotten your question. Sorry, I've just talked so much. Favorite song or most? Oh yeah. Song. Um, I don't know. I think the most challenging thing about the show is the emotional arc mm -hmm. because I just have to really commit to it. So for mm -hmm. the second half, it, I'm I'm on edge the whole time, yeah, and lots of the first half as well because when I'm with Earl and you know all uh -huh. those kind of things. Um, so I spend a lot of time with my physio doing like shoulders and neck and stuff yeah. like that, just to keep me like you know human. Um, vocally, I think probably the way that I sing the show. What baking can do mm -hmm. has more challenging moments yeah. in it, um, but for me, it is now in my voice, and I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I have the luxury of doing it every day. Uh -huh. So it's like a muscle; you work it out every day, then it gets yeah. stronger, you know, mm -hmm. or it becomes, you know, you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, so she's to be mine can be challenging because of the emotion. Um, yeah. But but then there is the bit at the end of the show, and everything changes, where I just then she used to be mine. Oh, the big one. Uh, screamed with Earl, given birth, kicked Earl out of the, com the hospital, and then today's a day, da, 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 yeah. which now is like, oh, it's fine, you can like, you can get that. But when your throat is like, ah, I was lost for you, like from crying, it's it's quite challenging. So that probably is the hardest bit of the show. Amazing. And just talking about like how emotionally challenging the songs are. How hard do you f find it to emotionally connect eight times a week? It must be so draining. Yeah, it can. Especially on a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. My, sometimes I feel, do you have that feeling when you feel like there's nothing in your legs? Like your yeah. legs are hollow. I do sometimes start the show mm -hmm. feeling like that and I really have to ground myself and I make sure that I'm eating the right things mm -hmm. and taking, I, I take electrolytes before every show so that I inevitably will sweat because it's warm in the theater so I'm making sure that I'm all topped up there. Um, but emotionally, I don't struggle to connect to it. Mm -hmm. I really don't, because I'm surrounded by incredible actors that bring yeah. something new to the table every day. And Pete will shock me with something, uh -huh. or bring something extra, or t drop something back which will take me by surprise. And it, it, he's just so bright. And the same with David, and the girls are just so supportive. And yeah, I was gonna so, say, this feels like a cast that just completely has each other's back. Absolutely, like, through absolutely. everything. So well, much. Whoever's on, whether there's a cover on, whether we've got a cut yeah. show, whoever's working backstage Which that day, just we've amazing. just got a great gang here, mm -hmm. we really do. Um, and we're very lucky in that, because it's not always that way. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's, it's uh, not a challenge to emotionally connect to it. It is draining, of mm -hmm. course it is, yeah. but in the most positive way that draining can be. Mm -hmm. Like when you finish a day at theme park and you're like, oh, I'm knackered, but that was yeah. so good. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? That it's that, that kind of, because it's adrenaline as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. So a question I always like to end with is, if you could go back and tell your younger self something or give your younger self some advice, what would you say to your younger self now after having done so much? Um, I would say maybe learn how to dance. <laughs> um, I don't know, uh, lots and lots of things. Mm -hmm. um, to do with kind of me and myself, I do um, suffer occasionally from anxiety. So I would yeah. just try and, with every person that I meet, mm -hmm. I always try and say, just talk about yourself mm -hmm. the way that you would talk about your best friend. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that because I, I like I said earlier, I have, can be quite self-deprecative um, when I'm deprecating. De I think that's the word. I'm sure. We'll Google it. <laughs> Google it. I'll put it in somewhere. I put myself down. But yeah. it's, so it's my kind of my humour. Uh -huh. But that's come from that you learn how to do humour, don't you? Yeah, so absolutely. so I've learned to put myself down over the years. Mm -hmm. And to a certain extent I think that's good because I wouldn't necessarily put myself high up on an arrogance kind of scale. Mm -hmm. But other people might, I don't know. Um but I wouldn't put myself uh -huh. up there, you know. Um but and I think that maybe helps a bit with that. But I would say that Especially when I was kind of 18, 19 after I did X Factor and I was mm -hmm. starting to audition and things. I really didn't believe in myself. And it takes time to get that. I know that that kind of comes with mm -hmm. life experience and things. But uh, I think that um, maybe a little bit through school I, mm -hmm. I found um, validation in the wrong places. Uh -huh. and um, 
So maybe just go back and reevaluate that a bit. But then I, I would also say professionally, I would have learned to dance, you know, classically, mm -hmm. I would have taken a bit more um, structured training in ballet and tap mm -hmm. and things like that because I went off and did my other things which mm -hmm. have made me who I am and that you know the friends that I made when yeah. I used to do athletics and I was on the the Welsh squad and stuff like in the mm -hmm. Cardiff teams I tra travel and the people that I was with have made me who I am and yeah. I'm, I'm quite happy with that you know but um but yeah maybe spend a bit more time doing that um and maybe eat less sugar because <laughs> Uh, in time, that's not good for your skin. <laughs> um, but yeah, so many things. God, I could write a book. What would I tell yeah. myself? Oh gosh, yeah. coming soon. To yeah, to oh, <laughs> maybe I'll get D Cannon to write the forward. <laughs> well, thank you so much. No, for thank you. It's been a pleasure. Make sure you come and check out Lucy and Waitress. Honestly, I cannot rave about her enough. She's incredible. Oh, thank you. And you thank will you. have a great experience. So, thank you so much. Thank you for following Waitress Week. This is basically ending it. There will be a separate video with Lucy answering your fan questions, so look out for that too. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.